NASA used this tool to send rockets into space, and now we're going to use it to put some lights on our terrain. The easy way. <laughs> this is your standard 3mm flickering LED, otherwise known as light emitting diode. LEDs have a short leg and a long leg. The long leg is the positive, but if you're unsure, you can simply test your LED with a coin battery, switching sides until it actually turns on. Before I was introduced to the wire wrap tool, of course I added LEDs to my builds by the use of soldering, but soldering has its problems. I find it a bit fiddly, the wires tend to be clunkier, there are smelly fumes that you have to contend with, and you generally have to use heat shrink so as to avoid shorting your LED. Also, running your LEDs in parallel, which prevents imbalanced output by the way, is a bit trickier, and generally you end up using crappy switches and tons of batteries. Not to mention the possibility of burning yourself. <laughs> This tool, alongside the Castle Conway boards from Terraintronics, makes the whole process so much easier. With wire wrapping, you use a much thinner gauge of wire, using the red for positive and the black for negative to avoid any confusion. On the side of your wire wrap tool, there is this little panel, which is your wire stripper. To strip your wire, you simply pass an inch of wire through the hole and pull in the opposite direction, leaving a clean bare wire to start with your wrapping. One end of your wire wrap tool will look like this. Simply pass your bare wire through the hole all the way. We then push the long leg of your LED down through the center. Long leg because of the red wire, meaning positive. You then simply twist the tool until you run out of wire. Once you've finished wrapping, you simply remove the tool and you have a perfectly connected wire to your LED. No solder required. On the Conway Castle board you have two sets of pins. The pins closest to the USB are your positive. To attach your wire to your Conway board you simply repeat the process by pushing your wire onto one of the positive pins and wrapping. The process of attaching this one wire to the Conway board and the LED took just over a minute. Obviously you've got to do the exact same thing with your negative wire. I'm going to go ahead and wire up all four LEDs on this board off camera and then I'll come back and show you the real benefits of using Castle Conway boards. Ta-da! All four lights are now connected up to my Conway board. I'm going to show you what's really cool about this thing. So you can solder up the Conway board via these two points to a battery pack if you wish, but you can see that we have a USB connector here, which means that you can use one of these. This is a standard phone charging battery and once plugged into your lights this will probably last for about 48 hours. A permanent solution that saves you tons of money on cheap batteries over time and as you can see this turning pot lets you control the power and output of your LEDs which is really handy for different pieces of terrain. These battery packs will easily power two Castle Conway boards, so I'm going to add another four LEDs and I'm going to connect these two Conway boards together using some extra wire before I put them into my build. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to add a little dab of hot glue in between the pins so as to help prevent wires breaking and also to prevent any shorts by ensuring that the pins or wires don't touch. In my last video I built this Gondorian structure for my friend Dean to show off the new slice and slot system by Microforge Minis and even though it's super cool as it stands, adding lights to your project always brings another sense of depth or realism to your build. Admittedly I have a bit of an obsession with adding lights to stuff but that is literally because I've discovered just how easy the process can be and I honestly think that wire wrapping makes electronics for the tabletop far more accessible. So I've managed to get all of my lights sorted out inside the build, I've got all of the wires coming through. I haven't put them permanently in place yet because back in December whenever I did my Zorb Zorb collab I also included some sconces and with the lights specifically the one thing that I wasn't very happy with was that the flames didn't look like real flames. So I'm going to show you something pretty cool that you can do with LEDs just to make it look like a real flame. This is polyester fibre, more commonly known as pillow stuffing. This can be easily applied to your LEDs with a few drops of super glue. This is exactly the same stuff that you might have seen people use to make explosions or big balls of flame for the tabletop. But for this we only need a small amount, trimming it down with scissors until you have something that looks more or less like a flame. I then brush on some orange paint over the top two thirds of the flame, followed by filling in the bottom third with yellow speed paint and finishing off with black dry brushing, getting progressively darker towards the top. This gives you what I think looks like a very convincing hot flame. 
So I've repeated that process on all eight LEDs and now all that's left to do is to put them back in, bend the legs and glue them into place with a dab of super glue before I go on paint my sconces and finish off the project. Now you could go ahead and trim the legs off your LEDs before this step, but I personally find that the legs are useful to hold onto from behind the walls to make sure that they stay in the right position when you glue them into place. I have tried it with trimming the legs before, but with the wires having a certain degree of recoil, it can be quite fiddly and frustrating. The only problem with keeping the legs is that there is a risk of creating a short in your circuit by the legs touching together. You could solve this problem by covering the legs with heat shrink, but I just make sure that once the lights are glued in, the legs are bent away from each other behind the wall. The last step of the whole process is some 3D printed sconces. I printed these directly onto the build plate rather than using supports, so I just dropped the whole build plate into the tank for cleaning, otherwise the sconces would fall through the grate and get messed up on the spinny thing. It is called a spinny thing, right? No. These sconces are so easy to pop off the build plate, although I did chip a few in the process. Gladly, I printed a lot more of them than I actually needed for this project, and I have a few left over for future builds. Now, you could paint these up as stone to match your project, but I decided to go for an iron look with a basic black primer followed by one coat of rough iron from Army Painter. No complicated paint job required. And then you simply glue the sconces over your flames with a dab of super glue and bing! I don't know about you, but I think that just looks extremely cool. A really easy way to take a build that you already have and level it up just that little bit more. Okay, that was supposed to be the end of the video there, but I have a little problem with this battery pack, and that is that the LEDs have such a low output that the battery pack doesn't even know it's plugged into anything. So after about 30 seconds or so, it's turning off. Stay on. Stay on. No! Oh! What is going on? It's so annoying, man. It's not a big problem though. I sent Daffod from Terraintronics a message and he said, you should have read the manual and I'm gonna need my soldering iron. So I'm gonna have to get that out of the bin. How does that spell go again? Binio reversio, sir? Aha. Okay, first I have to remove the two wires that were connecting the two Conway boards. And this little section is where I'm gonna put my resistor. So Daffod actually sends you out these resistors with the Castle Conway boards. Like I said, I should have read the instructions. Then you simply solder the legs in using the soldering iron that you should definitely not throw in the bin. And also reattach the wires that are connecting your two Conway boards and giving them a bit of solder. And then you can trim the excess off the legs and put your Conway boards back in the project. This resistor is now going to pull enough power from the battery so that it doesn't switch off. So yeah, definitely don't throw your soldering iron in the bin. It still comes in handy. If you are interested in putting some lights into your train the easy way, you can get the Conway Castle boards, the LEDs, and you can even get a wire wrap tool over on terraintronics.com. You can actually even get these noodle lights that we can see a lot of terrain builders using here on YouTube at the minute. I actually ended up using these in my Balrog build back in December to make the wings look like they were big balls of flame. And as it happens, once I had the Balrog all wired up, Daffod from Terraintronics actually helped me out with all of the programming to make the LEDs flicker in a way that was more like a ball of flame. He's actually released a video on that very process today over on his YouTube channel. I will leave a link in the description below this so that you can go and check it out. Daffod is a big fan of the wire wrap tool, but he still loves his soldering iron. Hello, how do you do? Hello. I really don't want to come across as preachy. I just wanted to make a video to show exactly how easy it is to add some light and atmosphere to your builds. As always, I want to say a massive thank you to all of the legends who are on screen right now for supporting me over on Patreon and helping me to continue making these videos for the community. If you're interested in joining me and some of these guys in a community hangout sometime, just request a Discord link and I will drop you a link in the comments below. And until next we meet, Nalaway Govan Advin.